Simon question 26C. And this is the next one I'm going to do. It's another one of these flowcharts that you have to fill in. You have got a secondary alcohol here, compound K, and they told you you started with a carbonyl compound, you reduced it, you got a secondary alcohol. If it's a carbonyl compound, it has to be either an aldehyde or a ketone. If you're producing a secondary alcohol, then you must have started with a ketone. So I'm going to draw, oh, sorry, the exact same structure that I had for compound K, except instead of that alcohol, I am going to draw a ketone. The reagent you use to reduce, okay, we know to oxidize, we're using acidified potassium dichromate to oxidize your reagent. I don't think we've actually come across this yet, but your reagent is going to be sodium borohydride, which we come across in more detail in year 13. The rest of the reactions though we've definitely come across. So I'm starting out here, I've got my alcohol, I'm reacting it with sodium bromide and an acid. I'm going to get a substitution reaction and I'm going to swap out that OH for my bromine, okay? Um, then I need to look at compound K again. This time I'm heating it with an acid. Um, I've got an alcohol. If I heat it with an acid, I'm going to dehydrate it. I'm going to form an alkene. So when I form my alkene, they're both going to have this same general formula. Because I'm dehydrating it, I'm losing this OH and I'm losing a hydrogen on the neighboring carbon. So I'm either losing this hydrogen here, or I'm losing this hydrogen here, okay? If I lose this hydrogen, then the alkene I'm going to form is over here. If I lose this hydrogen, then the alkene I'm going to form will be here, okay? They're not the same because of this methyl group, okay? Um, so you don't have the same symmetry. They're not just the same. So you do have two different products. Um, what other ones are going to do? This one is exactly the same as the one I've previously gone through. So I'm not going to go through it again. You can see in 27B that it's come up again. So it's a really, really common six more question. The answer is the same every time. So make sure you're comfortable with doing it. Um, I am going to do question 28. It asks you which one doesn't react with the nucleophile. So nucleophiles react with electrophiles. So you have to identify which one of these does not have an electrophile. Okay. Easiest way to do this is to draw it out. Okay. So I have got here, I've got an aldehyde. So I've got three carbons and I've got an aldehyde okay in my aldehyde I've got a carbon bonded to an oxygen that is a polar bond and that carbon there is going to act as an electrophile okay if I look at my next one I have got once I draw it out I will see that I have got an alkene now we know alkenes or hopefully we know that alkenes are nucleophiles. So you've got a nucleophile, it is not going to react with another nucleophile. So my no, straight away, my answer is going to be B. B is an alkene, an alkene is a nucleophile. Nucleophiles don't react with other nucleophiles. If you go through C and D and you draw them out, you will see that they both got electronegative elements in them, oxygen and chlorine. They're going to make that the carbon that's bonded to that electronegative element is going to be delta positive. It's going to be an electrophile. So B is going to be your answer there. Um, I'm going to do, we've seen lots of these reactions, I'm just going to do the bottom part again, okay? You have an alcohol, you're heating it with an acid cancellus, you are going to dehydrate. When you dehydrate, you're going to lose the OH and you're going to lose one of the hydrogens on the adjacent carbon. If I lose this hydrogen here on the left, then I'm going to, everything else is going to be the same, but I'm going to lose the OH and I'm going to lose that hydrogen and I'm going to end up with a double bond there. If I lose this hydrogen, then everything is going to be the same. Oh no, wait, what have I done? Oh, I've drawn an extra, apologies. I've drawn an extra bond there, so it should be da, 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 da. I've lost that, I'm going to have a double bond here. So it's whether the double bond is here or the double bond is here. But either way, you're heating an alcohol with an acetylcholine, you are dehydrating it, you are forming an alkene. If I do B, so you are told that you are oxidizing, okay? I know I'm oxidizing because I have got my oxidizing agent right here, and I'm doing that with reflux, and they want you to write an equation, okay? So you've got lots going on in compound B. You have got three different alcohol groups. This first alcohol group here 
The carbon that it's bonded to is only bonded to one other carbon, so it is a primary alcohol. This OH is bonded to a carbon that's bonded to two other carbons, so it's secondary. And this OH is bonded to a carbon that's bonded to one, two, three other carbons, so this is a tertiary alcohol. I cannot oxidize a tertiary alcohol. I can oxidize a secondary, and when I do, I'm going to form a ketone. And if I oxidize a primary alcohol under reflux, I'm going to go the whole way up to a carboxylic. Sorry, I'm going to go the whole way up to a carboxylic acid. Where's my pen gone? I'm going to go the whole way up to a carboxylic acid. Okay, for some reason, my pen is not working. But anyway, I'm going to form a carboxylic acid. So when I'm writing out this equation, I'm going to draw my structure out again. And this time I am going to draw a ketone in here for this carbon. It's not working. Work. Oh, there we go. Um, okay, I'm going to draw this out again. What have I done? Yeah, there's a bond. Um, this OH group is going to remain the same. I'm not going to be changing it. I can't oxidize a secondary, or sorry, tertiary alcohol. My secondary alcohol is going to become a ketone. My primary alcohol is going to become a carboxylic acid. Okay. Each time you've got an oxidation, you're going to lose a molecule of H2O. So I've got two OHs that are after being oxidized. That means I'm going to produce two molecules of H2O. To make sure this is balanced, and they've told me it's not by giving me that dotted line, I just need to count my oxygens. So on the left, I've got one, two, three, four oxygens. On the right, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So to get six over here, they told you you need to put a number here. If I put a three here, then I've got three, four, five, six, and then I've got six on that side. And all of that gets you two marks. Um, the next one I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to do out this one because I haven't done, I don't think I've done any of these as mechanisms. Um, so you've got your haloalkane, you're telling you that you're hydrolyzing it with sodium hydroxide. So if I'm reacting this with sodium hydroxide, I don't need to show the involvement of the sodium, I just need to use my hydroxide ion, that's going to be my nucleophile. I've got a delta positive carbon and a delta negative chlorine. There's my nucleophile, there's my electrophile. I'm starting my arrow at my nucleophile, going to my delta positive carbon, and I'm going to be breaking that bond. When I do this, I'm drawing this out again. And instead of that chlorine, I've now got an OH and I've kicked off my chlorine with a negative charge. Just make sure you're starting your arrow at the lone pair or the negative charge and that you're including your dipoles. Um, this, you're telling you that you're using reflux. They're asking you for a label diagram. Okay, make sure you can draw a reflux diagram. They're really easy marks. Uh, the rest of this, I I don't think you have to be able to do this. They're talking about chiral carbons. We haven't done that yet. Um, 31, they haven't shown you any of the uh, dots or any of the radicals, but you should recognize one of these equations from your notes. We did it. You're going to be doing uh, D, okay, NO2. You react that with O. That's an oxygen radical. And when you do that, you form your NO radical and you form O2. So your answer there is going to be D. Um, I'm going to do 32A. Okay, again, we've seen this so many times now. You have got an alcohol and you are heating it. And when you heat it, you're going to dehydrate it. So you're going to lose the OH and you're going to lose a neighboring carbon. So not the hydrogen on the carbon, but the hydrogen on the carbon next to the carbon with the OH. And you're going to form a double bond. So you are going to form yourself an alkene and everything else is going to stay the same. If you reflux, you are going to form, I'm not going to draw the whole thing out, but if you're refluxing, you're going to form a carboxylic acid. If you're distilling, you are going to form an aldehyde. Okay, everything else will be exactly the same. Um, you obviously don't have to do this. This is infrared spectroscopy. We have not done that yet. Uh, so you don't have to do any of that question whatsoever. And the rest of this, I think, from looking at the mark scheme, should be relatively straightforward. It's all stuff that is straight from your notes. So I'm going to leave it there. Any question that I didn't go through that you want me to go through, okay, make a note of it. Let me know on Teams. Any question that I went through, but it's not clear, again, make a note of it. Let me know on Teams. It's really, really important that you keep communicating with me. These questions, the exam questions, aren't easy. They're going to take lots of practice. So don't be worried if you find this homework quite difficult. But make sure you're going through the video and letting me know if you are still confused by the end of it, okay? It's totally fine if you are, but you need to tell me that so I can help you.